Hello everyone, Skids here and welcome to episode 25 of Skyrim Mods Weekly. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. First mod we'll be taking a look at is called Sky Die Prepare to Cry Edition by Sagittarius22. This mod is a gameplay overhaul that will make game significantly harder. Since Martyr thought that Skyrim was too easy, he decided to remove some of the features that Vanilla Skyrim has and also disable some of them and instead put some of his own features into it so that it will be harder and a lot tougher. So let's take a look at some of these features. First one of them is that fast travel is disabled, so you will have to use your own feet, horse or carts for traveling. Now this is probably the only feature I did do not really like because fast traveling is kinda very important and it saves a lot of time and it's not really about hardcore experience but it is one of the features and that, that's just Martyr's decision to include it. Another one of the features is that there is no health regeneration now. So for example if you're in a fight and you will get hit by a sword or an arrow and you used to kinda go away from the battle and just regenerate, you can't do that now because your health will just stay same and there is no health regeneration. Now if you think you can then just use potions and spam them since your health is not regenerating by itself. This was also kinda weak because from now on the potions will heal a lot less health points and by less I really mean a lot less, maybe like half of the original potions healed and they are also a lot lot uh, more expensive so that way you can just buy tons of them and and just you know on the battlefield you will actually have to think a little bit before you go into battle and another one of the big features and probably my favorite one is that running now takes away your stamina which is just logical and realistic so now not only when you're sprinting but also when you are basically using the normal walk uh, people usually use you will also run out of stamina and only way you don't run out of stamina is when you walk the, that slow walk that probably no one ever uses and I personally think that this feature is probably the most realistic one of all of these and I really did like it another one of the features is uh, some changes to armors so for example now heavy armor is uh, kinda acts like a really like a heavy armor so that you will be a lot lot slower for example if you're wearing a full Dedrick set you will walk very slowly almost like if you were just you know using the slow walk but you will also take more damage so you can so you're basically like a walking tank and for example if you wear light armor or if you're naked you walk a lot faster but you are also get one shot killed or you just can't take that much damage just like you would in a heavy armor so I think that's also a very good feature just like many of the other RPGs have and I really did think that this should have been maybe included in some hardcore mode for Skyrim in vanilla game because it really just makes you think uh, about your gameplay style and if you want to use heavy armor or light armor because right now you can just use both without any penalties. There are also a few changes done to spells and kind of fighting system. Now uh, when your magicka starts to the plant your spells will deal less damage so if you will spam them they will eventually deal a lot less damage when you're down on low magicka so it's better to just kinda only use magic when it is really necessary and same thing was also done to the usual fighting system with swords so if you have a low stamina your attacks will deal less damage so it is really yes. best to just save your breath for the fight and not deplant it uh, when you're walking or running. All small changes were also done to vampires so now you will get a constant uh, damage if you walk in a dark sun just like a probably a normal vampire should do and you can remove this kinda health drainage by using any headgear or by going to interiors or just waiting until night. And there are also some changes made to the level up system, so for example now when you level up you can choose the usual magic, a health or stamina increase, but if you want to use your new perks you will first have to sleep just like it was done in Oblivion. So for example if you'll sleep in your own bed or in any bed you will purchase, you cannot sleep in any bed in dungeon that will not work, you will have to use either your own bed or rented one. And after you sleep for a day you get a little pop up that will say that you can finally use your perks. And after that you can just use your perks and that is another one of the good small features that like I said it was just like this in Oblivion and I think that it fits in Skyrim as well. After trying this mod in gameplay myself I have to say that game is a lot harder now. I tried to use heavy armor, the full Daedric set with Daedric swords and before in vanilla game I had never any problems dealing with enemies but right now even when I had two companions with me the guards in solitude 
very challenge I had to use a lot of potions and it took me quite a lot of time to defeat them so if you're up for some hardcore experience I think that this mod will suit you well because it really makes game a lot harder and I did enjoy almost every feature of it except for that fast travel man. Otherwise this mod is great and if you like I said up for some hardcore experience then I definitely recommend it. Second mod I have for you is called Osmodius Solitude Texture Pack by Osmodius. As the name suggests this mod is a texture pack that will change textures all around solitude. Now I think that this is one of those texture packs that is mainly about your personal preference because even though it does improve textures and it makes them look better uh, I mean the difference between the vanilla solitude and the modded one is not so extremely big like it doesn't completely changes the whole look of solitude it kinda just improves it and just changes it a little bit it's not such an extreme change I mean there are different textures but it's not like solitude is suddenly made out of wood or something like that uh, I personally have to say that I did like these new textures they are made with parallax uh, but you will also need a project parallax remastered and the newest version of EMB for the parallax to work like I said I personally like the new textures they look uh, for me they look a lot better than the vanilla ones because the solitude now has a completely different atmosphere and I just kind of feel it looks fresh and I did enjoy this texture pack and like I said it's one of those texture packs that is you just first have to see it and, and test it out on your game on your EMB before you decide to use it and I will probably keep this mod on because I really do like this new solitude it, it's a little bit darker but it also definitely looks a lot better for me but uh, like I said it doesn't completely just destroy vanilla feeling it still has that atmosphere kind of a little bit of that atmosphere it had in vanilla game but it also has uh, some new things it looks fresh and if you if you like it as well just you know you can see it on the video right now mod is also available in three versions so even if you have a low res computer you can still use them there is high medium and low version and even if you don't have that parallax mod I mentioned you can still enjoy this mod without the parallax maps it is still quite good Moving on to companion mods, I have two very similar companions for you made by same guy called Yuich. First one is called Emily. You can find her in Temple of Kinaret in Whiterun. So now as you can see Emily is a standalone follower so we will not need any mods for her to look like just like she looks on the screenshots. She uses uh, CBB, UMP, uh, 7 base or CHSBHC body. And as you can see she has a custom face and now it is only up to you to decide if you like it or not because I know she may not look as very lore friendly and I mean that is the case of 95 follower mods on Nexus right now so that's not really on me to judge but I personally liked her character. She doesn't look so like off like some of the other followers look and with a little bit of tweaking I think she could fit in Skyrim very well. So yeah, now let's take a look at her in-game. She's an archer, her perks include Overdraw, Power Shot, Ranger, Armsman, Agile Defender and Custom Fit. In combat, even though Martyr said she was weak, I think she was pretty strong even with Skydive Madan. She kinda owned guard like it was nothing, even though she had a little bit of help of the follower we will be Taking a look at soon, she was still pretty strong and I did like her in her boat looks and combat abilities. So, like I said, it's just up to you if you like her. I showed her to you, I personally liked her. And that is basically all I have to say about her. So let's move on to the second follower mod by same guy. This one is called Philauria and you can find her in Viking Skiver in Solitude. So just like Emily, she's a standalone follower but she's not human, she's an elf. She uses CHSBH body as well along with CBB, UMP and 7 base and unlike Emily she's an archer but a defender and she has a full perk with black skills. Her combat style is mainly one handed combat warrior with shield and her perks include shield wall, power bash, deflect arrows and a lot lot more she has like 10 perks you know just the whole black tree so you can check that out in your game. And I have to say that she was even stronger in combat than Emily. She totally wrecked the opposition she faced and I have to say she's a little bit overpowered. I actually never said that about the follower but she was way too strong and like... <laughs> she definitely just wrecked all the enemies she met. And again she comes with custom face. Uh, this time uh, she looks a little bit elderly or 
that's at least how much I meant her to look like. And I don't know, I kind of liked her as well. She, if I have to choose between Emily and Philauria, I think I would go with Emily, but Philauria is not ugly either. So yeah, it's just up to you to decide which one of these girls you like more, or if you like both of them, or if you like none, it's just up to you. I personally like them, and you should go ahead and check them out. Now let's take a look at Dovah Blink Jewelry Replacer Rings and Necklaces by Testiger 2. So as we know in vanilla game, every gem, every necklace and every ring look almost exactly the same. Only thing that changes is color, and Sumato decided to change that, and so we created some new meshes for necklaces and rings. Now this one doesn't include any textures, so if you use any texture replacer mod, you are completely safe. The matter himself uh, recommends Aeterna rings, and that is the one I also use in the video right now. As you can see on screen right now, each one of jewels now looks different, so there is a big difference if you will wear a diamond ring or emerald ring, because uh, each one of them now has a different mesh. And I think that the concept and idea of this mod is very good, because let's face it, the vanilla jewelry they all look the same and it was kinda there was no variety in them and with this mod on you can finally use the jewelry like accessory like it's supposed to be used and not just for their abilities because like I said uh, each one of the different I don't know diamond ruby or sapphire rings now looks different the meshes looks great and especially if you use the texture replacer I mentioned earlier the jewelry definitely looks amazing and I have to say that this one is probably a must have for me from now on because you know there's there's just nothing bad about this mod that it can only make your game better and I have to say I definitely recommend it so make sure you go ahead and check it out. Moving on to the armor mods we have Midnight Breed Armor by Staltic. You can obtain this armor by crafting it at any forge under leather category. It comes in black and brown color and it is also available for all common body types like CBB, UMP or 7 base body. It also comes with custom model and textures. Now I know that this is again one of the armors that is not that lore friendly but I have to say that I really did like it. Uh, I know it may not fit in the game as much as some other mods I reviewed but this time we have to make an exception because this armor did, does really look good, the textures look amazing. There is a lot of details put and a lot of work put into this armor. You can see there are some leather straps, there is this nice little belt with pouches, there are some daggers on a hip and there is just a lot of detailed stuff on this armor. The corset looks good as well, it is not so skimpy like you may think it is. I mean, doesn't really show anything weird, it basically looks like a normal kind of like I know that it may not be as slow friendly as some of you guys like your game to be but seriously I did enjoy this armor it looks great uh, there is like I said a lot of other options you can have it in 4k you can have it in 2k there is a version without shadows there is black version there is brown version like I said almost all body types are also included so make sure you check it out the link for the download is in the description as always and the last two mods I have for you are weapon mods again made by same matter called China and these two weapon mods are two katanas that look kinda similar but were separated into two mods so let's take a look at each one of them First let's take a look at Bishu Osafune Yumori Kage Katana and Tachi. Wow, <laughs> that is clearly a Japanese name. Uh, so anyhow you can craft this at Forge under steel category using two steel ingots. And as you can see uh, it comes with custom model and textures. The textures are very shiny, they are very detailed, they look great. And the katana also uh, kind of fits in the game, It even though it doesn't have any scratches. You could say that people cared for it, so that's why it is not really scratched or stuff like that. And I have to say that the, I really did enjoy it, especially the handle and also the sheet. The sheet looked amazing. I mean, I almost never mention sheets because they're just, you know, the usual sheets. But this one, the red one, looks amazing. I have to say it really fits in with the sword and the theme of this sword and looks great. As well as the sword itself, I, like I said, I really like the handle. And also the blade, there is really nothing to complain about in this weapon except that in combat it is extremely overpowered, like it does over 200 damage and that is just way too much. I also forgot to mention there is the katana and tachi version, the katana is usually one handed version and the tachi is two handed version and both of them are great in combat, especially if you dual wield katanas there is like no way anyone can stop you. It's a 
guaranteed one hit kill and I, I would like to see a nerf for this because <laughs> you know that that's just too much like you can't really use these weapons in normal battles because the because you will just simply own anything so you just have to go into Gek if you want to use them or you can just use them for showcase and just show off to your neighbors or just shove it into Nazim's face and just show him that you have better katanas than his stupid cloud district so anyhow uh, like I said a great looking uh, weapon a little bit overpowered in game but otherwise it is great and I definitely recommend it and the second mod I have by the Sai Morator is also a katana and sword this one is called Fudo Miyowo and it is again comes in katana and tachi version you can obtain it by crafting it at forge under steel category again using two steel ingots just like our previous mod these two mods are very similar it comes with custom mode and textures this time the sheet doesn't look as amazing as it looks with the first mentioned mod but it still certainly looks very very good I mean there are some differences between these katanas mainly on the handle but both of them look amazing and an additional plus for this Fudo Miyowo Katana and Dachi is that it actually received a nerf. So there is a version where the weapon doesn't is not just the guard weapon that kills everything on sight with one shot. But I unfortunately did not download that one because I'm a lazy dick back. So yeah, just enjoy me slicing everything in sight. Yeah, so enjoy that. Anyhow, like I said, the both weapons look great. The handle, I especially love the handles and the sheet on the first weapon. The second weapon looks great as well, though it is also usable in combat. And like I said, there is nothing really to complain about about these two weapons, so make sure you go ahead and check them out. And make sure you also download the second version without the... that is not so godlike like the original one. So yeah, like I said, great two weapons. Definitely recommend them for downloading. And yeah guys, I guess that's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, tell me what you think about it in the comments. Subscribe for more Fallout, Skyrim and Titanfall content. And I will see you next time.